Alan Knight began scamming his elderly neighbor, Ivor Richards, out of his life savings in 2008. The Welsh father of three had befriended the man years earlier, but after noticing early signs of dementia, he decided to take advantage of the situation. Alan appointed himself as Mr. Richards' caretaker on the pretense that the man had no friends or family in the area to help him out. Over the course of three years, this con artist managed to steal more than £40,000 out of Mr. Richards' bank accounts, and at one point wrote himself into the old man's will as the sole benefactor. Apparently, Alan had pulled the names of two dead women from the local newspaper's obituaries to use as witnesses on the will. The BBC reported that Alan blew the stolen money on lavish holidays across the United Kingdom. He even bought himself a camper to take on these trips. Before long, social services had caught on to the significant amounts of money being withdrawn daily from Mr. Richards' bank account and reported it to authorities. That's when police began investigating Alan. Within three years, they had compiled enough evidence to formally charge him with forgery, fraud, and theft. Alan wasn't about to go down quietly, though, using increasingly sketchy tactics to worm his way out of trouble. He arrived at the police station for questioning and crutches, later appearing at his bail hearing in a wheelchair while wearing a neck brace. His wife Helen began telling people he had been involved in a freak accident involving a garage door slamming down on him, causing severe injuries. This was all a ploy to conjure up pity from members of the community, while attempting to exonerate Alan of wrongdoing. For his part, Alan told police his estranged son Martin had broken into and stolen from Mr. Richard's home. He also pinned the blame of rewriting the victim's will on the boy, which was a total lie. When that didn't work, Alan tried saying the police had bribed Martin into framing his father, triggering an internal affairs investigation into the police officer leading the case. The investigation cleared the officer and proved that Alan's word was not to be trusted. But rather than fessing up to his untruths, Alan doubled down. He denied that his neighbor had dementia, instead calling Mr. Richards a generous man who was all too happy to share his wealth. The police didn't believe him. Foiled again, the couple began playing up their claims that Alan had suffered from severe medical issues. Alan began collecting disability benefits as a primary source of income. Now the couple tried saying that Alan was paralyzed from the neck down, with Helen apparently telling police that he would, quote, lie on a sofa all day in constant pain, unable to move unaided. The South Wales Evening Post pointed out that even in the midst of this, Alan would file complaints to police over trivial matters like his neighbor's poor parking. And yet the couple was still bold enough to use the excuse of Alan having failing health to get out of two court hearings over the fraud case. British tabloids reported that they tried fooling doctors about the severity of Alan's condition, at one point saying Alan had been somehow poisoned. The couple went as far as buying medical equipment like oxygen tanks to hook up in their home that apparently kept Alan alive. Helen told the media that Alan was prone to slip in and out of a coma or suddenly go into seizures. Of course, conveniently around the time he'd be expected in court. The couple staged photo shoots for the media, with Helen looking solemnly at the camera as she appeared to care for her feeble husband. It's believed that Alan spent up to 10 weeks in hospitals, where test after test would conclude that nothing was physically wrong with him. Hospital staff grew suspicious when glasses of water left in Alan's room would empty themselves overnight, despite the fact that he was apparently quadriplegic due to his supposed injuries. Other times he would be seen wiping his face or even writing, functions obviously beyond the capabilities of a typical quadriplegic. Doctors also noted that the muscle definition in his legs was far better than that expected for someone who couldn't walk, and that he lacked any visible bed source. Nevertheless, Helen began a writing campaign to media outlets and even local politicians on her husband's behalf, proclaiming that her husband's permanent vegetative state had been confirmed by their doctors. Helen argued that law enforcement was putting the family through undue hardship, believing the court's treatment of Alan was a human rights violation. She even penned a tearful letter to the Prime Minister urging him to intervene. One journalist invited to their home recounted, quote, He was very convincing. He was twitching as he laid down in bed. Helen told the local press that at times Alan could only communicate through his eyes, quote, I can tell when he's in pain because he goes very red in the face and sort of squints his eyes very tightly like a child who's going to cry. It's the only indication I get." She then accused law enforcement of police brutality against her frail husband, saying he was dragged out of his orthopedic bed and carelessly dropped in the process, which apparently caused Alan seizures and extreme pain. These wild claims managed to convince their Member of Parliament Geraint Davies, who took it upon himself to write a letter to the local police urging leniency on Alan's behalf. 
In the midst of this, and whenever he wasn't in hospital, Alan and the family would holiday in other parts of the United Kingdom, with Helen usually driving until they got out of their native Swansea before Alan would take over for the rest of the trip. Local police believed Alan thought they wouldn't be able to nail him on anything given that his travels were done outside their jurisdiction. But the detective constable spearheading the investigation felt especially motivated to uncover the depths of Alan's fraud, and began seeking other ways to expose him. The DC obtained security camera footage from outside his jurisdiction, which caught Alan vacationing with the full use of his arms and legs. In one video obtained from the Severn Bridge, Alan was seen flashing his disability badge to get out of paying the toll fees, something he had apparently done multiple times, according to the investigation. Following him over the course of several months, the police officer photographed Alan shopping with his family, texting on a cell phone, and stopping to chat with other customers in what the cop described as high spirits. The smoking gun came from records obtained of Alan using his Tesco loyalty card at the supermarket, proving he had been mobile the entire time. The detective constable leading the investigation claimed that Alan had, quote, constantly avoided court for two years, costing police, the NHS, and the court system thousands of pounds. A search of the family's computer was conducted, where police found scores of photos taken on their various trips. The courts had had enough. Allen was told that his fraud trial was to go ahead whether he was present or not, in spite of his continued insistence that he was paralyzed. Allen still thought he could win sympathy by showing up to court wearing a neck brace and being pushed along by Helen while pretending to be unconscious. At times, he would appear to come too, but would only move his eyes in an attempt to play up his injuries. The presiding judge wasn't buying it though, saying of Allen, quote, Although a very accomplished and determined actor, he is in nothing like the condition he claims to be and the conditions he claims to be suffering from are simply non-existent. Though Allen initially tried contesting the charges, he was presented with the damning video evidence that completely contradicted his argument. Left with no other choice, he pled guilty to 19 counts of fraud, theft, and forgery, along with making a false representation for gain. Upon learning of Allen's deception, MP Davies was outraged. He felt he had been made an unwilling accomplice to his ongoing schemes and now called for Alan to be made an example of under the full force of the law. Everyone's horrified that one of the neighbours should pretend to be in such an ill state and take uh, his next door neighbour for £30,000 and then basically waste NHS money and police time and indeed my own time uh, living this fantasy in order to perpetrate this awful scam, so they're very angry. Unsurprisingly, Helen refused all requests for comment by the media. A few weeks later, Alan was sentenced to four and a half years behind bars for committing fraud against his elderly neighbor. The judge scolded Alan, labeling him, quote, as dishonest a man as I have ever come across. Calling back to the time he tried pinning the blame on his own child, the judge added, quote, it is clear that Alan Knight would stop at nothing in order to try and save his own skin. But the couple's troubles weren't over just yet. They still had to face justice for the con they played regarding Alan's health. The following year, Alan and Helen were scheduled to appear in court over the false representation charges relating to Alan's health. Despite already having pled guilty, Alan didn't show up in person for his sentencing and instead opted to appear via video link, for some reason still using his wheelchair despite already being outed as completely healthy back in 2014. Nevertheless, Alan admitted to perverting the course of justice with his scheme. He was given an additional 14 months behind bars on top of his previous sentencing. Helen also pled guilty, although her lawyer sought the chance to enter a basis of plea application after claiming she had been coerced by Alan to some degree. For her role, she received 10 months in jail. The South Wales Evening Post reported a fellow inmate made an attempt on Alan's life during his incarceration by trying to suffocate him in his sleep. A friend of Alan's feared for his safety, telling the Daily Mirror, quote, Alan has a target on his back since he defrauded that old man. It is like he has broken some kind of unwritten prison code by pretending to be in a coma and they're all after him. What he did is not worth killing him for. Alan was thus moved to another prison as a safety precaution where he'd serve the rest of his sentence. The Crown Prosecution Service immediately went to work investigating what assets the couple held thanks to Alan defrauding their elderly neighbor, but came up short. The only worthwhile thing to be sold off was the trailer he had purchased for their camping trips. The rest of the money had already vanished. Alan and Helen were released from prison in 2017. It's unknown what the Knight family has gotten up to more recently, although social media posts suggest the couple is still together as of 2023. Public posts show that after all these years, Alan still uses a wheelchair, 
but it's unclear if this is a lingering byproduct of his previous claims or because of a more recent condition. Ironically, some of Allen's public posts demonstrate a firm support for the National Health Service, the very institution he became a drain on throughout his two-year scheme. He and Helen appear to hold some grudge against the police, however, and continue to frequently put them on blast on social media. As for the elderly Mr. Richards, he was apparently reimbursed by his bank and lived out the rest of his days in a care facility before dying in 2018. Overall, this anomaly is a testament to just how hard it really is to pull off a long con like the kind Alan attempted, especially in an age where public video surveillance is more often the norm than it isn't. <laughs>